I'm here to deliver a snappy history lesson to entertain and educate the whole family. Today we are journeying back to 16th century England to explore the life of one of the greatest ever writers. Some people call him England's national poet, others the bard, but most people know him as William Shakespeare, because, you know, that was his name. Or was it? Hmm, more on that later. You may have seen films inspired by Shakespeare plays, such as Romeo and Juliet, based on Romeo and Juliet. Even Lord of the Rings contains references to Macbeth or The Lion King, based roughly on Hamlet. But this extraordinary writer came from a surprisingly ordinary background. William was born to John and Mary Shakespeare in April 1564 in a town called Stratford-upon-Avon in the West Midlands. His family wasn't poor, but they certainly weren't rich either. Dad, John, worked a few different jobs as a glove maker, a trader of leather and wool, and even a beer taster. <coughs> ordinary jobs for an ordinary dad. William was the third child of eight, but his two older sisters died tragically young, making him the oldest. A home shared with five younger siblings would have been quite cramped. Uh, William, go away! And the house was also their dad's glove shop. Talk about working from home. William went to the local, perfectly ordinary grammar school, where he would have learned all sorts of things, including Latin. But one of the things he wasn't taught was spelling. People just spelled things any way they liked back in those days, even their own names. William Shakespeare spelled his name at least six different ways, including Willem Shakespeare and Wum Shakespeare. Hmm, maybe I'll add a few more G's to my name. Greg Jenner. Grenner? Gredge. No, it's not really working, is it? Never mind. Shakespeare got married very young, aged 18, to a slightly older lady called Anne Hathaway. No, not the Hollywood actress. Possibly because she was pregnant with their first daughter, Susanna. And it wasn't a good idea to have a child when you weren't married back then. <coughs> Two years later, Anne and William had twins called Judith and Hamnet. Young William Shakespeare was a middle child of a middling family in Middle England, and he was all settled down with a wife and three kids. He was Mr. Average. <sighs> yeah, a bit boring. But William didn't spend much time at home with the family as he was always away in London. Poor kids. And poor Anne. Where's my daddy? And they didn't even have Zoom calls back then. In London, William tried his luck as an actor first. In fact, he wasn't the only Shakespeare to try. His younger brother, Edmund Shakespeare, also followed him. Under different circumstances, Ed and Will might have been the Hemsworth brothers of their day. But it didn't work out for Edmund. Aww. But William did better because he started writing plays. Wanting to be successful, he paid attention to what was trendy and noticed the fashion was for historical subjects, so he wrote a medieval trilogy about King Henry VI. Also trendy were mega gory tragedies where most of the characters got horribly killed, so William scribbled Titus Andronicus, set in ancient Rome, which features some properly grisly scenes that I don't recommend you Google if you've just had your breakfast. Oh! Yuck. To prove he could do a bit of everything, Shakespeare also wrote a controversial rom-com called The Taming of the Shrew about a man bullying a strong, confident woman into being his obedient wife. Hashtag not okay. Like you, William also lived through a pandemic, the plague in his case, which tragically killed his 11-year-old son, Hamnet. This devastating loss affected William's work in a really big way. Disease, death and grief are common Shakespearean themes, and you may have noticed that Hamnet is a very similar name to Hamlet, one of his greatest ever tragic characters. To be or not to be, that is the question. But Shakespeare also wrote a lot of comedies, and this made him unusual. In fact, a lot of his tragic plays have a naughty sense of humour, and many of his funny plays are actually quite sad. He also wrote a lot of cheesy dad jokes and puns, but I guess he was technically a dad, so I'll let him off. Ah, uh, dad. His versatility came in really handy, and unlike Leonardo da Vinci, Shakespeare actually finished things. In fact, he wrote at least 37 plays in his life, which averages out at two per year. Whoa! Even though he was living in London and writing for Londoners, Shakespeare often set his stories in faraway places like Denmark, Italy, Spain, Turkey, Austria, Egypt and the Middle East. For example, A Midsummer Night's Dream, one of his most famous comedies, is set in Athens in Greece. These locations would have been exciting and exotic, but London was also home to many immigrants and diplomats and foreign merchants, so his audiences might have known people or been people from those places. Shakespeare's genius was that he wrote complex characters of many different backgrounds. Othello is a Moor from Africa. Shylock is Jewish. 
And Shakespeare's lower class characters speak very differently to his posh and powerful ones. He also wrote great roles for women, although those parts were played by boys in a dress because women weren't allowed on the stage back then. Well, that's not fair, is it? <laughs> After his successes, Shakespeare was also rubbing shoulders with the A-listers of his day. Oh, let me take a selfie. He hung out with playwrights such as Ben Jonson and Thomas Middleton, and his famous actors like Will Kemp and Richard Burbage, who starred in many of his plays. Fancy. In fact, audiences were probably more excited about seeing Kemp and Burbage perform than they were in seeing something written by Shakespeare, who himself wasn't really made properly famous until 150 years after his death. Shakespeare? Never heard of him. Shakespeare's friends and colleagues were really important to him. It's easy to imagine him as a lone genius scribbling away, but he collaborated closely with his trusted actors, musicians, costume makers, business partners and other writers, such as his famous pal Thomas Middleton, who is possibly responsible for adding some of the famous witchy bits in Macbeth. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. And this was normal at the time, and it still is normal today. I wrote this script with my pals Emma and Gabby, because teamwork makes the dream work. Shakespeare wasn't just good at writing. He was also a savvy businessman. He co-owned his theatre company, the Lord Chamberlain's Men, and the Globe Theatre, which was built in London in 1599. <laughs> now, public theatres were really new and exciting, and were visited by people from all different walks of life. The Globe had expensive seats and comfy cushions at the back for the posh people. What, what? And it had mega cheap tickets for the common people, called the groundlings. Oi! Now, the cheap tickets didn't get you a seat. You had to watch the whole play standing up for as long as four hours sometimes. My feet are really sore. Oh, and there was no roof, so you might get rained on. The atmosphere was also quite raucous. Today, you're not meant to talk in a theatre, but 400 years ago, the audience would shout at the actors on stage, who would often turn and talk to the audience directly. A bit like Panto. Is that a dagger I see before me? Oh, no, it isn't! Even though the scenery was very simple, the actors' costumes were really flamboyant. And Shakespeare even used special effects. No CGI goblins or lightsabers, but they could make thunder sounds by rolling a cannonball across the roof. Oh, and they could make lightning by throwing fireworks through a trapdoor in the ceiling. Bit dangerous. Also, the fireworks were partially made of dung, so when you burned them, they gave off quite the aroma. Ew. In fact, in a stormy scene during Macbeth, when the three witches say this... Fair is foul and foul is fair, hover through the fog and filthy air. Well, the mention of that filthy air may have actually been a joke about the special effects team having just set off a poo firework. Gross. Ugh. Shakespeare's success kept growing. In 1597, he bought the biggest house in Stratford-upon-Avon, which had maybe as many as 30 rooms. And in 1603, his theatre company became the King's Men, the official performers for the new king, James I of England, who was also James VI of Scotland. William, Mr. Average Shakespeare, had officially made it big, and his family were granted a special family crest, meaning he was now a gentleman. Pretty impressive for a guy who grew up in a glove shop. Now that he was proper fancy, William opened up a second, much posher theatre called Blackfriars. Unlike The Globe, Blackfriars was an indoor theatre and was just for very rich people. I am very rich. Between the 1590s and early 1600s, he also wrote a lot of poetry, mostly poems called sonnets. And in 1609, he published a whopping 154 of them. Crikey! Whoa! Shakespeare stopped writing in 1613, because this was the year that his theatre, The Globe, burned down. During a performance of Henry VIII, his play, the cannon that they used to announce that the play was starting, well, it set fire to the roof. Yeah, this is why you don't have cannons in theatres. Anyway, Shakespeare went home to Stratford-upon-Avon, and he died there three years later, in 1616. Some people think he died on his 52nd birthday, though we're not sure about that. His wife, Anne, only lived a few years longer than William. But his story didn't end there, and in the mid-1700s he became recognised as England's greatest national poet. So, why do people still love his work so much? Well, it helps that he wrote so much stuff, because there's loads of things to enjoy. So many different things, of course. And he was incredible at making up clever phrases that we still use today. Have you ever said, melted into thin air? Or, wild goose chase? Or, I haven't slept a wink? Or, have you ever tried to break the ice? Well, then you have performed Shakespeare. Well done, you. Hooray! 
He was also brilliantly good at rude insults. I'm very fond of a blinking idiot, which is a Shakespeare line, but a less subtle one was thou art a boil, a plague sore. Oof, mean. I also love the line, you have such a February face, so full of frost, of storm and cloudiness. Beautiful, but also savage. You wouldn't have wanted to get in a TikTok insult battle with Billy Shakespeare, I can tell you. Do you need some ice for that burn? Shakespeare's exciting storylines, tantalising cliffhangers, fascinating characters, and the way he could capture feelings like love, fear and sadness meant he was beloved by audiences, rich and poor, for years after his death. And even today, Shakespeare's work feels profoundly meaningful to people all over the world. He wrote about humanity in all its forms. Bravo, William. And that brings us to the end of Shakespeare's story. So now it's time for the quiz. We have five questions. Are you ready? OK, here we go. Question one. Where was William Shakespeare's hometown? Question two. Who was William Shakespeare married to? Question three. Shakespeare worked in and co-owned which famous outdoor theatre in London? Question four. When performing a play, how did they create the sound of thunder? And question five. Shakespeare's 154 poems were published in 1609. But what type of poem were they? OK, let's do the answers. The answer to question one. Shakespeare's hometown was Stratford-upon-Avon. The answer to question two. He was married to Anne Hathaway. The answer to question three. The outdoor theatre was The Globe. The answer to question four. They used cannonballs to make thunder. And the answer to question five. The poems were called sonnets. How did you do? If you didn't get all five, that's okay. Why not listen to a different episode from series one or two? Hopefully you're now a William Shakespeare whiz. Tune in next time for some more homeschool history.